Welcome to Hispanics Today. My name is Rita Rodriguez Thatt, and I represent the Hispanic Women's Network. Today we're very pleased to bring you into the home of a local artist named Mitra Toledo. She was kind enough to let us into her home where we're going to talk about her, the person, the artist, and her art. Mitra, thank you for letting us into your home. And um, it's such a beautiful surrounding. The minute you walk in, you know that you're in a very special place. Mm, thank you. Um, let's start out. Who is Mita Toledo? Who, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are uh, you from? Well, I'm from Argentina, from Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. Born there? Uh, born in Buenos Aires. Okay. Uh, but my parents are from different backgrounds. My mother came from Spain, and my father came from Corrientes. Goya is a place inside the country, and uh, he has uh, Indian heritage, Guarani Indian heritage. Okay, so, so you're a mixture of two cultures. Yes. <laughs> Spanish from Spain and native Indian Ar from Arge the area of Argentina. Yeah, then. that's true. Okay. Is Argentina... Uh, like the United States, a mixture of many peoples from many parts of the world? Yes, I think so, especially in Buenos Aires, there are many people from Europe and uh, now uh, there is people from Korea and Japan and other Oriental countries. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, inside the country is uh, different though, it's more, you, you can see more the mixture in between the Indian and the Spanish. Okay. And is there more than one indigenous population, one, more than one Indian uh, tribe or race? Yeah, there are so many. There, Yeah, there are uh, many uh, all over the country. In the south, uh, they were uh, killed uh, at the end of the century. So many of the Indian populations that live in the Patagonias were exterminated. But in other parts of the country, they still live in, and uh, uh, they just uh, mix with other cultures, and uh, you can see them, you can recognize their faces. And Argentina is, uh, just by looking at the map, seems to be one of the bigger countries in South America. It, it, are there still areas like United States Southwest that are pretty much wilderness, or is it developed all over the country or no unfortunately it's not like uh, the United States it's uh, very developed in Buenos Aires and other places like Mendoza or Rosario or Cordoba but it's not all over the country uh, the El Desarrollo it's not all over so you have vast areas of just wilderness and, yes and indigenous populations I would presume the Indian yeah. population. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, how did you uh, decide to become an artist? Well, I always uh, felt different in the way that uh, I have uh, many emotions and I need uh, a way to express them. Mm -hmm. So when I was uh, around 14 years old, I decided that uh, I need to be I didn't think that I need to be an artist. I thought that I need to study fine arts in order to express myself and it was uh, a shock for my parents. <laughs> what did they want you to be? <gasps> well, uh, my father, I guess, he wants me to be a doctor and my mother, uh, she just wants me to be a good uh, housewife and uh, so it was uh, <laughs> a shock to them, but, but they, so they allowed you to take the training? Well, uh, they were discussing, they, they were trying to convince me not to do that, and uh, then uh, I just made my mind, and when uh, I decided that I need to do it, my father supported me very much. Okay and uh, he, he was uh, always encouraging me to do my best whatever I do, I'm to work hard. And, and, and you started your uh, artistic training? Yes. Is that correct? And, and I was looking at your resume and you started out by uh, going to a fine arts school. 
Yeah, I went to the Manuel Belgrano Fine Arts School, mm -hmm. and the training over there is four years emphasizing uh, in the drawing discipline because uh, they believe that uh, drawing is the base of all the different disciplines so we have to master that one in order to uh, do uh, our work and, and um, you still do the drawing yes and because I see in, in the work of, that I see in your home so d you started out by doing the drawings first. Then. Mm -hmm. um, I think right behind you, Mirta, I think is is a beautiful one that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. And I, I forget what did you tell me the name of that was. The name of that one is Pure Diversity, and uh, it was the name of the show that I had last year at TCU. Um, oh, in Fort Worth. In Fort Worth. Okay. Yeah. And the faces. Um, are from all over. Yeah, well actually the faces that you see in that uh, drawing are from all over forward because what I did, uh, I take uh, my children to the malls and uh, they play in the video games and in the meantime I'm waiting for them and I look at the people who is passing by mm -hmm. and I try to capture their faces and the feelings that they have. Uh, especially on weekends, I feel that people express themselves more. They're more relaxed. Yeah, they are more relaxed. Shopping, and spending healthier. money. <laughs> and also the, the clothing is different, it's colorful, and the hairstyle, and uh, everything is so beautiful and different. Mm -hmm. So I uh, take uh, notes of that and then when I I am in my studio I uh, compose and you showed me that notebook and it's full of different yeah. things and yeah. ideas that have uh, that you've been inspired by people that are around you and your yeah. surroundings yeah that's true. and then you've you've composed all of those people yeah and I and remember exactly where and when not uh, the, the exact day but I remember when and the place that I saw that uh, particular person and uh, why that person uh, interested you. It was you. Yeah, it interested yeah. me. Yeah. Caught your eye. Yeah. Okay. I know that we have one right behind me and I don't know if we can see it. Um, yeah. Also uh, an example of, of, of your work, your drawing. Yeah, that uh, is called self-portrait living in North America because uh, it was um, it meant to be an answer to a friend. I received a letter from this friend that is living in Argentina. And uh, in the letter said that because I'm living here in the United States, I'm, I can't understand them anymore because I live in the north side of the world and I am in the first world. In Argentina, people is talking about the, the first world or, or the second world. Mm -hmm. world and. Um, I was really sad because even though I'm living here and I'm trying to become part of this culture, I have uh, my roots and my education and I am also an Argentinian and uh, I didn't know what to say because I don't like to be aggressive and I didn't know how to put my feelings in words. So I uh, made this drawing that uh, the map is upside down, meaning that even though I am in the, the north part of the world, I, I always am going to be an Argentinian somehow. And in Minnesota, uh, uh, I looked at your resume and it talked about acrylic painting, and yet another media that you started working in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, acrylic, uh, when I was in Buenos Aires before uh, going to Minnesota, uh, the acrylic was uh, something really new and it was very expensive. Mm -hmm. So when I get to Minnesota, I have the opportunity to have the material. And it was uh, fascinating to experiment for the first time and I did uh, huge paintings and uh, it was very exciting. Okay, and we have an example of that. Do um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, this one I didn't make it in Minnesota. I made it here in Fort Worth, but it's uh, also an acrylic painting. And uh, 
As I told you, I like to reflect different feelings that people have, and that uh, particular day I feel really excited and happy, and that's what I try to show in my painting. With a bright yeah, and vibrant the happiness. colors, yeah. just shining it's out of It's called Alegría. Alegría, happiness, joy. Happiness, yeah. Okay. Um, it says that then you returned to Buenos Aires again. Mm -hmm. and took up yet another area of your work. Yeah, I was doing a sculpture in Buenos Aires. And this fascinating lady sitting between us <laughs> is an example of that, and uh, why don't you tell us about her? Well, she's called Pachamama, who is Mother Earth, and every time I moved to a new place, I made uh, Mother Earth because my father made me believe that uh, somehow we belong to the earth and she's our mother and uh, she provides us with love and food and everything. So I think that she's uh, somehow magical. So that's why mm -hmm. I need her presence when I have a new house or home. So this is Pachamama Fort Worth? Yeah, Pachamama Fort Worth, that's true. <laughs> Where did you get this face? I don't know. Is from, this the person my, that you've seen? No. Is, in, this, this is somebody that... Uh, no, this is uh, from my inside. Okay. I always... Uh, I never take a model to do a Pachamama. Okay. I just uh, decide that I'm going to do one and... Uh, I guess the face, uh, it came with the clay. Okay. That's what I like to believe. <laughs> And you've done one for every time that you've moved, so... Yes. Have you kept them all? No, no. This is the only one that I have right now. Okay. And uh, I made another one in Hawaii and I sold it. Okay. So why? Yet a different culture. Yeah, yeah it's and exciting, it's beautiful.